Hey guys, I'm Marcus, and we're doing this point cloud tutorial. In this video here, we're going to do ICP or iterative closest point with robust kernels. So previous videos here in this point cloud tutorial, we've been through the, like the ICP algorithm, how it works, how we can align point clouds and how we can estimate a pose of two different point clouds. And then we can actually like align them together because we're trying to estimate a transformation between two point clouds with ICP. But in this video here, we're going to do some optimization. We're going to get, get better results when we're going to use robust kernels with icp but first of all remember to join discord server i'll link to the description here you can join the channel channels about computer vision deep learning ai and so on you can also become a member of the channel if you want to support the channel with a small monthly fee everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel also if you're a member of the channel i can also help you out with your own projects if you have some problems and i can give you some guidance if you're a member of the channel here as well so thank you guys so let's just jump straight into the code here. We have open up a Jupyter Notebook uh, tutorial here from Open4D. So we're just going to go through the blob of code. I'll explain what all the lines does, and, and then we're actually like going to see the results. We're both going to run some, some code with, with just the standard, the standard or like vanilla ICP, and then we're going to use it with uh, robust kernels here as well. So we can actually like compare the two different kind of approaches uh, that we can use. And we can also see that with robust kernels, we just get way better results. Uh, because we can actually reduce some of the noise also if we have some noise on our point clouds which is often the case or like is the case all the time when we're operating with like point clouds that are captured by ourselves if we don't have like these perfect uh, ground truth benchmark uh, point clouds which is just like really good point clouds we'll always have some noise on our point clouds so it's really good to use these robust kernels when we're doing icp or trying to do something uh, or do some operations with our point clouds but first of all here, again, like in all the other videos throughout this tutorial, we're going to import the different kind of modules. So we have open for d NumPy, uh, copy here, OS, and the system. Then we're just going to open up our, our interactive visualization window here. So we just go inside open for d tutorial. It's just a file that they made or like a class. And then we can actually like just open it up here so we can get this interactive window where we can play around with the point cloud, as you know, from all the other videos we've been through. So we're just going to run this blob code and then we can actually like see um, that we have now run the code. Then we can go down and see the robust kernels here, like this tutorial here, demonstrate the use of robust kernels in the context of outlier rejection. So if we have a lot of outliers or have a lot of noise on our point clouds, we can actually like use these robust kernels to do some rejection of those. So the, for this particular tutorial here, we're just looking at ICP, but as we can see here, we're using ICP as the target, but in theory, we can actually like apply this um, optimization problem here for a lot of other different kinds of algorithms. But in this uh, Open3D tutorial here, it's only implemented for the point to plane ICP algorithm. So here down here, we can see that the notation and some of the kernels implemented in Open3D has been inspired by this publication. You can go in and read more about that if you want to know more details about uh, this algorithm and like what is going on uh, behind the algorithm. So the tutorial here is the original uh, implementation of the robots kernel in Open4D. And we can see here uh, who contributed to this project or like to this implementation of robots kernel. First of all, we need to specify our input data. So again, we're just going to load in some point clouds. We're going to load in two point clouds and then we want to apply a transformation uh, between those two point clouds. And then we just want to use ICP registration to actually like find the transformation that we have applied uh, to our point cloud because then we have actually like uh, estimated the pose or like the transformation between those two point clouds. Again, if we didn't know the transformation, we will again, we will try to estimate the tra that transformation. So this is just a demonstration of like how it's done. This, this code here, it reads a source point cloud and target point cloud from two files. And then a rough transformation is given. So we're trying to estimate a transformation, but first of all, we need to transform uh, the original point cloud. So we both have a source and a target point cloud. So the initial alignment is usually obtained by global registration. Again, I have also a video on the channel here about global registration. So if we don't have a good initial guess of the transformation between two point clouds, we can really use ICP because it's just it's take it's just taking like the iterative close points. So we're just trying to take all the close points in the point cloud and tries to match match those. So we can't really match those if the points are not really like close to each other. So if you want to do global and then you need to do global registration to get a good initial guess and then you can refine your point cloud or your, or your estimated transformation with ICP afterwards. Again, go through the tutorial here on my channel. I have tutorials about like global registration, ICP, how we can combine them, tune them and so on. So here we're just going to draw the registration result this is the same function as we've used in all the other videos. So basically just draw registration results here. It just takes in a source and target and a transformation. 
it draws the, to the, the two point clouds and then it also applies the transformation on the source point cloud. It just draws it here in two uh, random colors or like two uniform colors uh, with these values here. So we're just going to run a flow of code. This is just for demonstrating what is going on and then we can show what the algorithm here acts like does. Then we go down, use the test data provided by Open3D here. So we're just going to read in a point cloud, uh, the source point cloud and the target point cloud. We're just going to take the cloud bin zero here, PCD, and the cloud bin one PCD here. Then we have a, tra uh, a transformation initial guess here. So we just set up an initial transformation guess. Again, this, trans this transformation initial guess here is a good guess because if we don't have like an, a transformation close to each other, or like that can transform the two point clouds into each other, uh, we can really use ICP and we will need to use global registration first. So here we just have a good initial guess. We're just drawing the source and target point cloud and also apply the transformation on our point clouds. So here we're just going to run the blob code. We can now see the results. So we have the target point cloud and the source point cloud. And then we can see we have actually like transformed uh, one of the point clouds here. So we can see like the chair here. We can see the yellow part here is a bit above the blue part. And also the floor here and the walls is a bit separated. So we basically just transform the two point clouds or like one of the point clouds away from uh, the other one. And then we're going to use ICP to actually like try to align these two point clouds here perfectly on top of each other again. So now we're going to go down and use point to point uh, or like point to plane ICP with robust kernels. So basically here, registration ICP can be, be called with a parameter transformation estimation point to plane. And then we can actually like specify a loss where loss is a given function also called a robust kernel. So basically this is the only thing that we need to do to, to be able to use robust kernel here instead of only using ICP without robust kernel. So again, you should definitely just use it. Uh, you get way better results and also it will, it will be way better when we're talking about like outlier rejection and also if you have noise on your point clouds as you're going to see. So down here we can see if you want more uh, more information here about the ICP registration. Again, I have also have videos about that, so definitely just check those out. Then here we're going to compare vanilla ICP versus robust ICP. So in all the other videos we've been using vanilla ICP. In this video we're going to use robust ICP, and then we're going to compare the two different kind of approaches to each other. To better show the advantage of using robust kernel, again here we're just artificially generating Gaussian noise to our source point cloud and then we try to find an estimation or like an estimation estimate of the transformation between those two point clouds and as we're going to see when we're using robust icp uh, we just get way better results because it actually like has some weight that is trying to find the lightest residuals and then it tries to mis minimize the, the residuals as well so it actually like assigns a weight to all the residuals and the larger the larger residual is like the, the better or like the more impact it will have in the algorithm so we actually like reduce like all the outliers. We're trying to reject those by giving them a, a, a huge weight. Where in vanilla ICP, we're basically just use doing like least squares, um, least squares optimization. So here we're just creating a function to apply the noise to our point cloud. We just pass in our point cloud. We're passing in our uh, mu here, which is the mean value. And then we also have a sigma, which is our standard deviation. Then we have a noise point cloud, which is just a copy of our original point cloud that we pass into our function. And then basically here, we're just going to apply it here. So we just go in take all the points from our noisy point cloud and then we just apply this random normal distribution here. So we just take numpy at random and then we take a normal distribution with this mean value and this sigma value. And then basically we're just adding that to the points in our point cloud. And then we can just basically just convert it here. So our noisy point cloud points will be equal to open3d.utility. And then we're just going to create a 3D vector of our point uh, that we applied noise on up here in the line above and then we're just returning our noisy pcd then down here we're going to call the function we're going to set our mean and we're going to set, set our standard deviation so in this example we're just going to set 0 and 0 0.1 so the larger we have our standard deviation like the more noise we will apply on our point cloud so you can try to play around with these parameters here try to see when does the algorithm break and when is the act like the same results that we get from vanilla ICP and robust ICP because if we don't have any noise on our point cloud we just have a perfect point cloud it doesn't really matter if you're using vanilla ICP versus robust ICP because we don't really have any larger residuals that we need to assign a weight to um, and so on so there won't be any um, outliers that we need to reject so that will just be the same result but when we have noise on our point cloud so we can see that robust ICP is just way better. 
So down here, we're just drawing our geometry. So we're just drawing our noisy point cloud. So here we create the function and then we just apply the noise to our point cloud. So when we run this block of code, we can actually like see this noisy point clouds that we have. We can still see like the floor, the wall, we have the chair, like some kind of chair here. Um, and we also have something over here to the right. And also the painting here in the wall, because, but this is a really noisy point cloud. And now we're going to actually like use ICP to find, trying to find a transformation from our first point cloud, from a source point cloud to our target point cloud. But in, if our, uh, but on our source point cloud, we have this noisy, like really noisy point cloud. Again, you can try to apply more or less noise to the point clouds. Again, everything will be available on my GitHub. So you can just go down to the description and download the code and try it out yourself. So now we have a source point cloud here with noise. And now we can go down, use vanilla ICP. Again, we won't go into details. We just go in to uh, the pipelines from Open3D go to registration, transformation, estimation, point to plane. And then we basically just call this function here, registration ICP. We pass in the source point cloud, the target point cloud, a threshold value here that we need to set. And also the, the initial transformation that we applied. We also have the P2L here, which is basically just what algorithm are we actually, like, what algorithm do we want to run this ICP with? Then we're just going to print our rec P2L here. Then we're going to print out the transformation as well. And then we're just going to draw the results that we get from using vanilla ICP. So now we're just going to run the block of code here. We can see that we have this vanilla point, point to plane ICP with a threshold value of 0 0.02. Now we can see that we're trying to align these point clouds, but again, we're not really capable of aligning these point clouds here. We can still see like the blue chair here is a bit below the yellow one. We can also see the floor here. So we don't really get any good results because this is just a two noisy point clouds for a vanilla ICP algorithm. But then we can go down here and actually like tune and we also print out the transformation. So this will be the transformation where we actually like to want to transform the source point cloud onto the target point cloud. Then we can go down and tune the vanilla because given the fact that we're now dealing with Gaussian noise, we might try to increase the threshold here to search for nearest neighbors uh, with the aim of improving the registration results. And then we can see down here and we can see that under these conditions and without a robust kernel, the traditional ICP that we've been through, uh, through in the other videos throughout this tutorial has no chance to deal with outliers. So when we have outliers, again, if you have your own uh, point clouds created from like different kind of sensors, lighters or so on, so on, you will also have noise on your point cloud. So definitely just go with uh, ICP with robust kernel. This is the same code. We just I change the threshold here to 1.0. We can actually like try to lower it a bit down, maybe like 0.5 uh, and run it here. But we could try with 1.0 here to start off with. So when we run this block of code here, we can now see that we have the vanilla point to point ICP again. We have a threshold value of 1.0. But now we see it is not capable of all. This is just a way worse result before tuning actually. So we just have the chair over here to the left. It doesn't really make any sense what it's trying to do here in the ICP algorithm. We can try to lower this value here a bit. Maybe it was too large that we, that we like increased it to. So we can try with 0 0.5 here before we go down and compare with the robust kernel ICP. So here we can see we get some better, a bit better results in without tuning. The blue chair here was a bit uh, like below or over the, white, the, the yellow one here, but not, but now we can see that there's still some translation error here. The, the, floor is maybe a bit more um, aligned, but we still see that we have some errors here, even though we're trying to tune and fine tune our ICP. And again, this is not a really good solution to just try to like optimize or like try to uh, try different values here, just trial and error with some threshold value, just use ICP with robust kernels. So if we go down here again, we just set up our loss function. So again, we just call the same functions. We just need to pass in a loss function new now. So we can actually like specify uh, this, like these residuals here, the larger residuals that we try to minimize or and reject outliers in our point cloud. So here we just set up our O3D pipelines registration dot took it loss. And then we just set our K here equal to the Sigma value uh, that we set for our, um, for our noisy noise that we applied to the point cloud. So here again, we're just printing out a loss and then we just set up a new uh, registration pipeline here for a transformation estimate point to plane and then we just pass in our loss function. So this is basically the same thing that we did with this vanilla ICP. We're just going to run the block of code so we can see the results. The only thing that we need is this line of code and then just pass it into the algorithm. And then we're going to use robust kernels instead of uh, vanilla ICP. 
So now we can see the results here. We just get way better results. Like the point clouds here is perfectly aligned on top of each other. We're able to, to estimate and find the exact transformation between the, those two point clouds here, even though we had a lot of noise on our point cloud. So the last thing here, because now we're actually able to do this uh, point cloud alignment, we can also try to apply a bit more noise and try to see if we can actually like break this, uh, break this um, point cloud or like ICP registration with um, with robust kernel. So now we can try to increase the sigma value here or like the standard deviation to 0 0.15. And then we can see we have way more noise here. We can't even see there's a chair anymore. Uh, this is just a really noisy point cloud. But again, in the real world, this could actually like be a, a really good example of a point cloud from some different kind of sensors that we're using. So we can do now robust ICP. We're just going to run this block of code here again and see if we're trying, if we're actually like able to estimate this um estimate this pose here or like transformation between our points so we can see again we get a really nice result maybe we have some errors over here but again it doesn't really make any sense we're perfectly aligning the two point clouds again even though we have that much noise on our, on our point clouds as you just saw we weren't e even able to see that there was a chair in the point cloud anymore or like this uh, brown thing over here or the painting the floor it was just like one cluster of different kind of points so this is actually like a really good result when we're using ICP with robust kernels. So thank you guys for watching this video here. We've been through everything here. Again, the conclusion for this video here, we saw the results when we're comparing vanilla ICP with robust kernels ICP. Definitely just go with robust kernels ICP. Try to apply some more noise on your point clouds and, and so on because we're actually like rejecting and minimizing uh, the residuals for the outliers that we have in our point cloud. So we're trying to reduce the noise while we're doing ICP and trying to estimate the transformation between two different kind of point clouds. So remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video here. And also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. It really helps me and you channel out in a massive way. So I'm currently also doing this computer vision tutorial where we're talking about basic image operations, camera calibration, stereo vision, and so on. And we're actually like trying to get point clouds from stereo vision, use point clouds in this tutorial here and so on. So if you're interested in that computer vision tutorial, I'll link to it up here or else I'll see you next week, guys. Bye for now.